All right, everybody. So, watermelon girl just from, and we're gonna go ahead and start doing a live Q and A session. Now, if you were watching the premiere, you should have shifted over pretty naturally, but this is my first time doing a redirect. So I'm going to give people just a bit of time to show up, but I see the chat's already starting to blow up with the watermelon emojis. <laughs> so um, first of all, my goal was to hit around um, a thousand people on the premiere and we hit 1100. So thank you. And I want to thank a few people for that. One, I want to thank all the content creators from the Blender community and animation community that shared my film. For you, I understand that you've spent a lot of hard work building up your platforms. And I'm grateful that you shared some of that hard work and that precious space with me. So thank you to you. Now for everybody who's watched my channel along the way, it was your comments and your purchases of my products and my courses and supporting my videos and tutorials that really helped motivate me make this project. It provided me with the finances I needed to get it completed and also kind of gave me goals along the way to check off and complete the film. So just a big thank you to everybody who's been involved in the channel and everybody who shared it. I'm incredibly grateful. Now, I've spent five years on this short film, and it's very close to me emotionally. I'm probably going to log off for two weeks and just try and not look at the views, but I would greatly appreciate if you ensure just to leave a comment on the video, share it, or if you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter, I have teaser links there that you can go share, and I would just really appreciate the support there. So now that we got that intro out of the way and people are kind of coming into the chat here, um, I see the chat starting to blow up. It looks like people enjoyed the film, so that's great. Um, getting the thank yous out of the way, this is a live Q&A session. I always get tons of questions and comments on how I do things. So I'd really just love to hear some of the questions that you have about the film. If there's scenes you wanna know how I did specifically, um, if there's tutorials you'd like to see, the chat's moving pretty fast. So <laughs> hopefully I can catch some of those questions as they go by. If you don't have questions specifically, I had done some posts and I have questions pulled up from the comment list just in case people didn't show up to the live Q&A after, but it looks like we got some people here. So one question here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna answer like as many questions as I can. I'm gonna give it about 20, 30 minutes, and um, I'm willing to answer technical questions if that's what you want to hear. I'd encourage you to ask non-technical questions, like if you have questions about um, process or pre-production or things like. Thank you, Kelly. Um, yeah, you you can just ask your questions. You don't have to give me money, but thank you. I will answer that. Um, so. Uh, if you'd like to ask non-technical questions, um, then I, I can answer a lot of those. As you know, I'm a tutorial channel, so I'll spend a lot of time on the technical stuff later. So this is an easy place to ask non-technical questions, but I see a bunch of questions coming in. So I'm just going to kind of start diving in. Um, Kelly super chatted. You don't have to super chat to get your question answered. I didn't even remember I had that on. Dear goodness. Thank you for sending me money. You don't have to. You can go buy my products and get something for your money. And I feel better about that. But I really do appreciate it. Um, but I'll answer Kelly's first here. Um, how and how long did it take for it to render? So I've been working on this project. I had the idea 18 years ago in high school. And then I've been trying to make the project for about 10 to 12 years and failed multiple times. And I recently completed this finally. And this version that I started was about five years ago. Now, in terms of rendering, I had about 230 shots and I separated them into about 200 partial renders. And I did render this all on one machine. I have a video on how to build PC specs and I go on all the details there, but in short, I have an NVIDIA GeForce 490 RTX. Disclaimer, they are a partner of the channel. They provided the card to me, but it's been incredible. I didn't have to use a render farm. I didn't have to use multiple computers to render. I rendered it all on one computer using that. And then I um, used some laptops and things to kind of work while I was rendering. Now, with that 4090 RTX, I'd say that on average, each scene, you know, it varied depending on the complexity. Some had volumetrics and things that made it take longer, but I'd say it took about 
you know, you're looking like between one to two hours per um, shot or sequence. So, you know, if you total that up to about 230 shots, I'd say it's safe to say it probably took me around between three to 500 hours of render time. But I was also re-rendering things constantly. So, I mean, I, I definitely rendered for thousands of hours overall. Um, great. Okay, so let's look at some of these other questions we have here. How did I make the hair physics? I'm seeing that one pop up a lot. Um, and people are also asking about the audio. So Devin Pulaski is a music composer. He did the music. He's been in the chat. I'm not sure if he's here in the live stream chat. He was in the premiere chat. And then Sanctus Audio, which is a professional audio studio, did the sound design and they're incredible. They uh, work with a lot of the large clients. So I was excited to fit in on their schedule. And uh, I did all the visuals and other people did all the audio. I'm, I'm not good at audio. So, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people are asking about the hair. So let's dive into the hair. So the hair was actually made from two other tutorials. CG Matter or Default Cube has a tutorial on how to create ropes by drawing curves with geometry nodes. So I first used that, then I converted it to a mesh and then Blender Secrets he had a tutorial on like rope physics and it was really simple and easy to follow. So essentially it's a rope mesh made with geometry nodes that is then attached to a simple subdivided plane. And then I run the cloth simulation on the subdivided plane. That way it's like a really low poly simulation, but then I can attach it with a modifier to that rope mesh. So then it ends up looking kind of like, you know, this high poly rope is being animated, but it's really just a simple mesh. Um, somebody's asking EVR cycles. This was definitely all cycles. Uh, I wanted to do a lot of things that weren't possible in EV. Let's see, what else do we got here? Is there going to be a sequel and how did I stay motivated? I'm seeing a lot about staying motivated and doing big projects. So um, let, let's talk about, is there going to be a sequel? Um, for the sequel, I have an idea on how to expand it into a series. I'm also talking to people about children's books, and I would love to talk to game devs about making a game. So this is largely going to depend on the success of the film. If you'd like to see more Watermelon Girl, then share it, rewatch it, comment on it, like it. It helps because when I talk to producers, if I can say, hey, people like this thing, it makes it easier for me to kind of justify getting support to finish it. In terms of staying motivated on long projects and big projects, I have a video coming out specifically about that, but just a few quick tips. One, plan ahead. Now, as creatives and artists, we don't wanna go through the planning process. It's boring and it's not creative. It's just a bunch of technical documents and calendars and stuff you don't wanna do. But if you're like me and you struggle with that and you don't wanna do that, what I recommend is setting aside one hour every Monday or whenever you start your week and just spending that one hour to plan what you're going to do that week. That's what I did because I couldn't sit down and plan everything. I just would go nuts. So I'd plan just one hour a week, what I was going to do that week and get it done. And by always having a plan and a goal to complete within a week, I was able to get through the larger project. I tried to skip that phase and I failed three or four times. Like I said, I have a video diving into that. I just saw a couple people send super questions again. So I want to make sure I don't miss those because um, I'm very appreciative. Um, how did you get the 2D textures to work with the face? So I have two tutorials on this. Um, one where I teach you how to use a driver setup on just an image sequence and another one on how I teach you to attach it to a rig. So um, you can go watch those videos on my channel if you'd like to see. Also, Blender Secrets just covered the process. Now, I used Blender and that uh, technique I show in those videos for the start of the film. But as it went on, it was becoming uh, a bit cumbersome for me because I wasn't used to working that. Most people don't know this, but I actually have more experience in After Effects professionally than I do Blender. So I ended up switching all my 2D facial animations to After Effects just because it was faster for me. That was the only reason. You could achieve the same exact results in Blender, but essentially they're image sequences. And most people don't know this, but you can make two UVs for one character. 
So there's a UV for her body texture and there's a UV for the face. Again, I break down how to do that in my tutorials. You can go look those up. I saw Smeef just hopped in the chat and asked, how fleshed out were your storyboards? Okay, so this is a great question because I started storyboards and then I was like, wow, this is taking too long. So I quit and I knew that that would leave me to fail. So instead of doing storyboards, what I did is a shot list. And again, I have a video where I show like what the shot list looks like, but since I was animating everything myself, I didn't need the storyboards to communicate to other people what I was trying to achieve visually. I just needed a note reminder. So by skipping the storyboard and doing a shot list, since I was doing it all myself, I was still staying organized, but I was kind of preventing a step that was going to take a ton of time. And since I was an individual animator, it ended up actually being very freeing for me because I was so focused on uh, completing the shots and things that if I had a storyboard I put all this work into, I would have like stuck to it no matter what. But I ended up kind of re-editing the film, deleting and adding things as I went. And I was able to do that for me mentally because of the shot list. It was easy just to move text around on a shot list. If I had done all these pretty drawings and animated it and edited it into an animatic, I would have been like, no, this is the way I'm doing it. Now, granted, maybe the project would have felt a bit more polished and not needed that re-edit if I had figured it out on that phase, but that was the process I took. Did I use Filmic Color or did I use AGX? So AGX came out in, I believe, Blender 4.0. This was primarily animated in Blender 3.4 through 3.6. So I used Blender Filmic, and then I edited my film in Premiere, and in Premiere, I used Lumici to color grade. I'm not good at color grading, so I'm sure there's some people out there that could <laughs> definitely critique that aspect of it, but I used um, a Creative LUT in Premiere, and then used the scopes to try and get everything balanced and kind of matching from shot to shot. Because since I was building different scenes and had different lighting setups, things didn't always look perfectly consistent. Let's see. Could I do a short video on your file org process? So I do actually have some stuff coming out for that. Bloop Animation is sponsoring a video and um, that is up and coming and I'll be talking about the organization process. And yes, folder structure is surprisingly big and also weirdly not covered on many channels like I, I feel like a big part of the reason my projects failed in the beginning is because i didn't know how to organize my scenes on my folders and nobody teaches how to do that so i'm gonna try and remedy that and put it in a future video and actually what helped me learn it was some people that like worked in the film industry left comments on my videos and gave me tips and i wish i could remember which video that was so i could highlight them but it's been far too long let's see what character was your favorite to create and animate and why so, okay, two answers to this. Favorite one to create and animate was definitely Watermelon Girl because I designed her in high school and kind of seeing her come to fruition with much higher fidelity than I would have ever been able to achieve prior was just very exciting and personal to me. I'd say one of my other favorite characters though, um, to not choose the main character and be boring, is the whale. And I think what I love about the whale is that I designed that character for Instagram um, just as I was learning things and it blew up. It was like one of my most liked posts ever. So it actually altered the story because initially Watermelon Girl falls into the ocean during the storm and then she helps the whale and the whale helps her escape the ocean. Initially what happened was a sea monster, which was a tentacle holding one eye, pulled her underwater and then she ended up helping the sea monster, and then he would carry her back to the top. But because the whale was so popular on Instagram and altered the story, and I think that just kind of makes that character a little bit more interesting for me. Let's see, what else is on here? What inspired me to create this? There were a lot of things that inspired me to create it. Um, let's see. When I was a kid, my mom used to jokingly tell me that if I ate watermelon seeds, they would grow in my stomach. And I just thought that was funny. And that makes a funny premise. And that was kind of like the idea behind the character. In terms of what inspired it, just tons of things. I love reading classic folklore, fables, fairy tales, parables, all that. So um, 
there's a, a French fable about um, a person who dies and then lives on within a statue. Obviously, you see that in the beginning of the film. There's some grim fairy tales in there. Um, you know, there's Rapunzel with the hair. There's a, a lesser known one about a girl who gives her food away along a journey. And that was very kind of inspiring. Um, kind of Jonah and the whale with her like in the ocean and getting carried to the beach. Just a, a lot of, you know, different inspirations mixed into there. Um, let's see. I just saw a question that was really interesting. Y'all are moving so fast in the chat. Um, <laughs> um, when and where and how did I start learning Blender? I'll answer this briefly, but I have a full video on this. Um, if you check up how I went from a pet company to a tech giant in like however many years I have listed in the video at that point, I really dive into my journey. But I tried using Blender all the way far back as high school and just kept failing over and over. I seriously started learning Blender about six, seven years ago. Um, it really clicked for me that time um, when Blender 2.8 came out you know, the user interface was so much easier and that really kind of like solidified kind of my journey within it. Let's see there. How does the story relate to your personal experience? So you might notice that um, there is a theme of loneliness with her being isolated on a patch and all of that and um, her coming together to form a community. There's two main themes here. There's her overcoming her loneliness and then there's also the theme of kind of like selflessness and how um, giving to others can end up uh, letting you receive more. So the theme of loneliness, I had always intended that I would have a family early on in my life. That's just not how it worked. I didn't start a family until I was like 28, 29. Um, so there was a long period there where I was kind of living by myself after college and um, yeah, just kind of struggling with loneliness and wanted to work that into the story. And I just believe we live in a world where if a lot of people were more willing to kind of like share and give, it could just be a better place. And that's kind of where the second half of the theme came from. Which artists influenced you most? And am I plan on making a course? I'm reading a couple of these out loud, so I don't miss them. How did you manage the style changes over the year? All right. So which artist influenced you the most? I think it's very evident from watching the film that I am greatly influenced by stop motion films. Ardman films, Tim Burton, Leica films. It's very clear those are an inspiration to get those out of the way, obviously. Talking about the less obvious ones, I am a huge gamer and um, Nintendo is a big inspiration. I really looked to games like Little Big Planet, It Takes Two, and others that kind of had crafty styles that I could kind of reference. I really liked what some of the artists did in there. So I take inspiration from a lot of things, but those would be the main ones. How did I manage style changes? I feel like moving into it, I was constantly discovering my style. And once I felt a groove where I'd really kind of hit stride and a look I achieved for, I stuck to it. And as an artist that likes to explore other mediums and styles, that was actually very difficult for me to kind of commit to one style. Um, let's see. Uh, did becoming a father change the story or certain emotions of the video at all? So... I had a baby mid-production, um, and uh, it didn't alter the story because the story at that point was solidified. But during parental leave was probably when I worked the most because I was off work, and I just set up a card table next to the crib, and while she was napping, I would just hammer away at watermelon girl shots. So although it didn't alter the story, it did alter watermelon girls animation because i had saved a lot of her animation for that last kind of like push and having a little baby and, and watching how she sees the world and new definitely influenced how watermelon girl saw the world because you know she kind of she's born and like very innocent in the beginning and kind of just experiencing everything for the first time am i planning on making a course i am working on new courses it's been a long time since i did one because i've been so deep in production Right now, I'm trying to figure out what that course is. Bloop Animation already has a how to make a short film course. So I feel like it's kind of redundant for me to make something like that. But I am planning on taking some of what I've learned from Watermelon Girl and putting that into a course format. Would greatly appreciate any input on what you would like to see in courses. It's definitely helpful. How many Blender crashes did you face while making the movie? Not many. Um, it didn't crash that often. 
The only time it crashed, it was really myself to blame because I would have just put too much junk in the scene so that when I was opening it, I was hitting memory crashes. Usually a restart would flush my RAM, fix it, and it would work after that. Let's see. For someone who's going to make a short film, what would you suggest start doing? Um, I touched on this a bit briefly in another question, but I feel like I could expand on this one. You, If you want to make a short film, you need to have your story, you need to have your script, and you need to have your shot list before you start producing it. Now, you can do character designs, you can do character rigs, you can start playing with all that if you know you're going to use it. I'd also recommend keeping it small. I had eight characters, I think about 10 or more environments, and it's a 13-minute short film. I'm very proud of the final product, but it was an unnecessary challenge. You can tell a good story in two to three minutes, one scene, two characters. So I would recommend starting smaller than I did because I, I definitely did not have a good work-life balance while working on this. So let's see, what else we got here? Um, how'd you make those little circle textures for the wood? <laughs> That's a funny one. I, I think you're talking about the knots and the spirals in the wood. That's actually just part of the uh, texture itself. So I have a crafty asset pack I sell that has wood textures. I use clay dough. I use polygon textures. Ducky 3D has amazing texture pack. And I also use substance textures. So those wood knots and spirals are just kind of mixed in there. I guess the reason you might notice them more is that I basically turned up the normal map and made them like more prominent because I kind of wanted that um, fantasy toy look. Let's see. What else do we have here? Um, could you, would you still use frames to make a children's book? I am talking to people about making a children's book. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. I need to meet kind of like the right people, but yes, that is on my list of things to do. As I mentioned earlier in the chat, I just had a baby and I would love to read her the storybook of Watermelon Girl. I don't think there's much like success to be had in children's books because it's such a populated medium. I feel like it's pretty rare for someone to stand out, but I would just enjoy to do it as a personal endeavor. Let's see. Um, what's your advice for coming up with a good story? You need to write something personal. You need to write something that speaks to you because if you can't find a personal aspect in it, it's going to be near impossible for you to write. Now, you might think that doesn't make sense. How does somebody write something like Star Wars, for example? He never went to space. Well, no, but Star Wars is the journey of somebody from a small town rising up above their means. And that's probably something that George Lucas could you know, relate to. So try and find something personal that you can relate to. After that, I recommend checking out Hero's Journey and Dan Harmon's Story Circle to kind of like find your plot structure and ensure that you're writing something that makes sense. You know, it's interesting when you break away from traditional writing schemes, you create something unique, but at the same time, you want to make sure you're also making something coherent. Let's see. A lot of nice comments in here. Um, I'm looking for questions. Let's see. How many different Blender files did you make for this film? So it was about 230 shots. And I think I landed around 200-ish blend files for the projects. Now, if you're counting versionings, like props, characters, environments, assets, you're talking like a few hundred blends. Um, let's see. Uh, what else do we have here in the chat? It's starting to slow down, so I might end soon. Let's see. How did you organize your scripts and scenes? Was it stressful and difficult to organize ideas? So I try not to allow sponsors on the channel that I think are irrelevant to the audience. I don't think that does anything. You really don't want to see an ad, and I don't want to try and sell you something that I don't really think you're going to like that just doesn't feel nice. So whenever I pick a sponsor, I try and pick something I think would be useful to the audience, even if it's not specifically related to Blender. One such sponsor was Milanote, which is a tool I had not heard about prior to them reaching out to sponsor. And it radically altered my production pipeline on Watermelon Girl. I talk about that a lot in an upcoming BTS video, which they will again sponsor later here in April that I'm finishing up editing now. But 
using a tool like Mila Note, it has like a lot of kind of like sticky note type features, graphs, cards, and other things. And I found that personally much easier to organize my ideas and thoughts than just sitting in Google Docs and trying to organize it from top down in a Word style document. So for me, it was being able to kind of splatter all my ideas uh, a sticky notes on a board and then slowly kind of bring them together into something cohesive. That's how my brain works. Um, I'm a very ADD type kind of thinker, not like extreme that I need medication, but I definitely have to do some practices to keep myself focused. So that, that was definitely helpful for me to work that way. Um, so Derek Elliott, a great YouTube channel is asking technical question. You had 200 blend files for these shots. Do you not do V1, V2, V2B, shot three final, shot three final B? Yeah, there's a lot of that. There was definitely like, there's some where I had like 10 versions of one shot, which just exploded and would, if you count all those versions, I probably have over a thousand blends sitting in the production folder. But, um, yeah, I did do a file naming structure of zero to letter. So that would basically be like shot two, uh, a, and then later if I was like, crap, I need to add a shot between two and three, then I would do shot to B. And that's kind of how I kept those things organized. Let's see. Um, me and some friends are making a film. What tips do you have for a bunch of teens trying to make something, uh, organize and set goals. If you have a group of people set roles and try and be careful of not too many cooks in the kitchen mentality. If you have too many people providing input, it can sometimes prevent progress. So try and get your ideas together. And once you have them solidified, try and keep them that way. Um, ever changing the project is a quick way to kill it. Once, you, once you've committed to an idea, try and stick to it. Let's see. Um, let's see. There are a lot of questions and they're still moving fast. Derek wants to know if I delete my files eventually. I use Google Drive, so I archive them online. So they get deleted from my hard drive, but they get archived online. And then I also keep an external hard drive where I occasionally just back everything up because I'm always scared of my files being deleted. Um, as a budding animator, my parents ask me this question. How will you manage your finances? And I don't know. I think the root of that question is how will you make money as an animator? So that's kind of what I'm going to answer. Okay. So when people think animation, they think Disney, they think being an animator at Disney. And if you can't get an a animation job at Disney, how do you make money? Okay. Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, Disney is insanely competitive and you're not likely to get in unless you are extremely motivated. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you, if you feel that strongly, you can work there if you're willing to put in the work for sure. But there are other avenues of success. I've been doing professional animation work for 10 plus years now. And almost all my work has come from agencies, direct to client relationships, doing advertising. But majority of my work actually comes from tech animation. And the majority of animators I know work in either tech agencies or small studios. I know a few animators that work at studios for Netflix and things. One of them was just here in the chat a second ago. Lollipop Man on YouTube does um, some animation like that. However, there are other avenues of success and it, you can quite easily build a career in animation if you're motivated. Let's see. Would you recommend starting a YouTube channel to get better at Blender? And let's see, what else do we have here? Um, what was the most important thing you learned while creating your short? Okay, so I'm coming up on 30 minutes here. So I'm probably gonna end it in the next five minutes or so. I don't want this to go on too long, but there's still questions being asked. So would I recommend starting a YouTube channel to get better at Blender? You can. Um, that's how I did it. Uh, I wanted to get hired to do more character animation work. So I started an Instagram and then people wanted to know how I was doing those characters. So then I started like YouTube and teaching people how and that kind of turned into a business. And then I actually was doing less client work and more just my own artwork on YouTube. And for me, that was very appealing. YouTube and social media is very competitive. 
it looks fun and there is a small percentage of it's that fun, but it's majority work. Do you need to start a YouTube channel to learn Blender? No. Can that be one way to motivate you to learn Blender? Certainly, yes. But also keep in mind that if you're managing social media, you're adding one more thing that you have to do on top of your to-do list. Let's see. There was another question I just saw when I just read it out. Um, what was the most important thing you learned while creating the short? So I've been talking about organization a lot, and that was definitely part of it. But since I've already given that answer, I'm going to talk about something else. Work-life balance and managing burnout. I burn out many times on this project. And there was once, I remember, I don't think I worked on Watermelon Girl for like between one to three months. It like really burnt me out. And I was scared I wasn't going to finish it. It may be tempting to sit down and work from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. to try and get something done. But all that's going to do is um, burn you out and then take you down from the project. And you might not get back on the project if you feel defeated enough. So manage your work-life balance, pay attention to your own mental health and ensure that you are consistently working on your project, right? Try and work on it every day, every week, every other day, whatever your goal is, but make sure that you're also taking care of yourself mentally through the process or you won't complete it. And you could, you know, lead to a very tiring. Yes. Joey Carolina, who is, I hope you're saying your name correctly, is a great YouTuber on here. He says pacing is key. This could not be more true. Once I got into the right pace, I started making way more progress than when I was just trying to cram things out as fast as I could. Smeef says I'm spitting facts. If you've seen Smeef's latest video, he has a lot of great advice on learning and how to pace yourself. And Kaisen's telling him to go to bed. Smeef is in Australia, so it's very late for him. Um, all right, let's see. I think we're kind of running down on questions here. There's well, there's a few more coming in. Let's see. Is making a rank and bask esque film in Blender possible? Yes. I already have a lot of videos on how to create stop motion style effects, and there's also been other YouTube tutorials on it. So I'd point you to those in terms of creating stop motion style. Rank and Bass is more than just stop motion, though. They also are a specific grade of film, color grade, and all that. So I would look into film emulation techniques so that you could get a proper color grade and look. And then, of course, redraw their characters, break their characters down, figure out their shape language, figure out their silhouettes, and create that type of stuff. Let's see. What took the largest bulk of your time in the process? Oh, what did? I mean animation is too broad of an answer so i'm going to say that the pacing of the film is what took the longest and what do i mean by that i don't mean the pacing of my workflow on it i mean the actual pacing of the film like when you watch the film it's 13 minutes long Nobody wants to watch a 13 minute short film. In fact, I'm scared nobody is going to watch it because it's so long. But what's very important is pacing and that if you are asking somebody to watch something for 13 minutes, that they are entertained throughout the entire piece. Pacing applies to everything. It applies to the edits. It applies to the music. It applies to the variety of environments. It applies to the characters. It applies to the actions. It applies to the story beats. It applies to the animation. So pacing was my primary focus throughout this entire thing that if nothing else came of this film. I did not want people to be bored. So I'd say that I spent a ton of time on pacing. Um, there's like AI questions in here. Um, I'd probably save those for another video if people are curious about my opinions on that type of content. Um, I see the animators, or some people are asking about the music composer in here. He's actually told me that he's going to do a behind the scenes video breaking down his process of the music. So it'll be kind of a, a less technical approach to what he did for the music. So I'll make sure to share that out on my socials uh, for his channel so that you can follow that up as well. And let's see, people asking about textures. Um, what was most difficult to create? Um, would I be honored if Blender was used in, or if Watermelon Girl was used in a Blender splash screen? I mean, that'd be pretty awesome. I have thought about submitting it. Um, the problem being, I think you give all the project files away for free. I don't mind giving away some of the project files for free, but my goal is to um, expand the series. 
in which case I would worry about how copyright might play into that. So I have thought about giving away some of the environments because um, I'm not like stingy on that. I don't, I don't mind people seeing it, using it, playing with it. It's just that it, it's hard for me to imagine a watermelon girl splash screen without watermelon girl <laughs> in it. Um, how did I get stuck at perfecting a shot? How did I deal with it? Yes. Okay. Um, the, uh, somebody asked just real quick when I said this, somebody said, any advice for conquering loneliness as an adult? I am not a professional. I cannot give professional advice for me. It was finding a community and surrounding myself with friends through me that came through a local church and my work. So I just encourage you, um, to reach out and find a, a community though, as I said, I can't offer professional advice. Um, but I do, uh, sympathize. So, um, back to the previous question, which is the, how did I get over perfecting a shot? So again, I'm going to talk about this in a future video, but perfectionism is one of the quickest ways to kill a project. What do I mean by that? Because of course you want your project to be perfect. Well, you know, a hundred percent perfection oftentimes isn't noticed by the viewer. So why not stop at 95%? You may have heard artists or professionals say that you spend the most time on the last 5%. I agree. So I quit at 95%. So why do I do that? Because that last 5% can kill a project or it can take the entire length of another project. And I personally find more value in gaining experience on making 10 projects at 95% than I do using that same time to finish one project at 100%. This is very hard to know when to stop and when's the right time to stop. That comes with experience and just professionalism. Uh, having done many due dates and client work, I've been forced to stop and get it as good as I can up until that due date. So I always encourage you to stop before you get to that point of when it's going to become self-defeating. So a lot of shots on Watermelon Girl, I feel like I hit 100% of a few of them, but most of them, no. I can see about 5% more I'd like to fix. So let's see. Um, how many views do you expect from Watermelon Girl? I want all the views. I'd, ha I'd have to say my expectations are low. I'm releasing a short film on a tutorial channel, and I think YouTube might get confused and think it's actually a tutorial. And when people don't click it, they're going to hmm, it's a bad tutorial. I also don't know if my thumbnail is good or not. So if you can go comment on the video and share it, I would greatly appreciate that because after five years of work, I would really like for it to get some views. Although, if it doesn't get many views, the few people that have seen it do seem to enjoy it, and that is very encouraging. Let's see. Uh, this Q&A should stay up on the channel afterwards, as long as I set up all the settings correctly. Um, what roadmap would you suggest learning for Blender? So me, Kaizen, Ducky, maybe Smeef, and others all have, like, get good at Blender videos. Um, the best way to learn Blender, and all those we kind of do a roadmap. I have one specifically where rather than just recommending a list of learning resources, I recommend the order. So I can't remember the name of the video. But <laughs> if you look up learning up Blender on my channel, you'll find it. I think I did it like uh, late last year, but I, I basically went through like an actual like path of like start with this one and then just keep going here and there's a lot of recommendations in there uh how do you manage the days when you sit in front of your computer and after some hours no matter what realize you did nothing like creativity block all right two ways to overcome creativity block one ensure you're not burning out have you been working on this too much you might actually just need a break come back to it with a fresh mind two consume lots and lots of art and not just Blender art. I want you watching movies, reading comics, reading books, looking at paintings, looking at photography, looking at other animators, looking at motion design, looking at traditional animation, watching movies, playing video games, like whatever. Just start consuming art and be intentful about it. You know, like maybe instead of playing this game because you have to grind out a battle pass, maybe you play this game because you want to check out the art style. Take notes. And, you know, keep like an artboard around. And that really helped me always get over creativity block because anytime I got blocked with my own personal thought process, I could kind of look to what art, other artists were doing for inspiration. That definitely be, had recommend getting around that. 
Um, have I thought about doing a crowdfunding campaign for more episodes? I have a hard time asking people to just fund my personal projects. Um, if you give me money, I want to give you something. And sure, there's an episode in there, but still, it's like it's it's my personal project, and I feel bad asking other people to invest in something like that feels like it's more for me. If you want to support the channel and like finding more content like this, then I recommend like my products and courses. That way I feel like I'm giving you something for your money. And sure, maybe you really want to see another episode and you consider that. And I appreciate that, but I just personally have a hard time getting over that hump. That's not to say I'll never do it, but right now I'm going around to producers and studios and maybe it'll land that crowdfunding is the only way I can get support. But um, that's not my first resource or thought that I am achieving to go. All right, I'm going to answer one more question. Let's see, what do we got in here? Um, there's a lot flowing in, and I also had a list from another thing. I'm going to answer this one about environments. How to make all your environments and stuff uh, after the story's been prepared, how to prepare a mood board, and other things. I actually relied on Pinterest for a lot of my mood boards, which is like surprising. I have never would have thought Pinterest would be the place I was going for inspiration on Blender 3D, but I don't know like what they did, but Blender, or Pinterest's algorithm is like perfect. Like I find one piece of artwork I want, and then all of a sudden like the bottom is just flooded with other artwork like that. So I created a lot of Pinterest boards for this piece. I used Mila Note to drag over some of the things there. And then I used my iPad and uh, a drawing app called Procreate to kind of do a lot of my sketches and designs and create mood boards and reference things like that. And then in terms of how I completed the environments, I would oftentimes start with uh, the idea from the script. Then I would move down to like an art board and a mood board. After that, I would start sketching things, playing with that. Then I would get in Blender and I would just fail on average, four to five times, I would try and make the environment and just wouldn't work. And then usually around that last time, I would kind of like get it. In terms of the technical process, I didn't use a ton of model asset packs on this because the story was so stylized um, or the style was like so toy-like. It was hard to find assets that matched the aesthetic I was going for. So a lot of the background objects and stuff are very simple shapes, spheres, cylinders, things like that. And I focused on color composition and textures. I've already mentioned a lot of the texture resources I used. I did use some sculpting resources from um, the uh, Blender market. Uh, I've, I've linked those in my videos before, I believe. And then uh, lighting asset packs and some other things. There's a Gobo light asset pack, which I've mentioned a few times, and I'm linking in my future videos that I use for a lot of lighting scenes. And with the environments, I spent a lot of time on the colors and ensuring that everything was easy to read. And then there was always a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. And then uh, I would spend a lot of time on the lighting color schemes as well. So I would use a color palette for the um, lights, just like I would on a character or a drawing. And then I would try and you know find color theory within the lights. And I tried to just not do blue and orange lights on everything. So with that, that's going to be the last question I answer. If you haven't already watched the short film, I encourage you to go over there and watch it. If you follow me on socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you'll see that I already have a teaser up. I would really appreciate if you'd share those to your story or repost it, help get word out. YouTube, live chat is great, but YouTube really loves comments and likes. So if you can just comment or like on the original Watermelon Girl video, that would be insanely helpful. I'm very grateful uh, for all of you attending. I'm grateful for all your questions and I'm grateful for all your support on the channel. I hope you found the short film enjoyable. I hope you thought it was worth the wait and I hope you found this live Q&A helpful. Again, thank you. And it was nice talking to all of you.